Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young and I'm going to be showing you how to paint another miniature landscape today on a 2x2 two two black gessoed canvas. Here's my new series of paints that I recently purchased. Uh, thank you to my patrons. And this is the tiny little canvas that we're going to be working on today. I also recently got this new pad of paper. Uh, it's textured canvas paper specifically for acrylic paint. And I thought I'd give it a try yesterday. Um, I had fun making this pretty pastel seascape. I'm not too impressed with the paper. If you guys can recommend something a little bit better than that that won't ripple. It is um, Strathmore, I believe, or Daler and Rowney. There's Tilly and Henry. They always keep me company when I'm painting. So let's get right into this painting, guys. I'm just going to put up some tape on the back of this little canvas to keep it in place. And I'm going to squeeze out some light ultramarine blue. Lavender, light blue, and some hunter green. Next, we'll take some yellow. The next two colors are turquoise and light green. And I'm going to be using just a little bit of black. I'm take a little filbert brush. And I'm going to begin this painting with lavender and blue. That's the ultramarine light blue. And I'll start painting a circle, leaving the inside black and painting the outside. Now because I'm painting on a black gesso canvas, it's gonna dry darker than what we see here right now. It'll look quite purple in a few hours once it dries. Take some white now with a clean brush and I'm going to start painting inside of this circle. Adding some more purple or lavender. Now you can see the color a little bit better as it's starting to dry. I've got way too much paint here, so I'm just going to scoop some of it off and put it back on the palette. Notice how you can see that black canvas through there. We're going to have to wait for this layer of paint to dry and then build up the layers as we go along. Now I'm going to clean my brush, switch over to some light blue. And I'm just going to go partially on the white and partially on the lavender and go around softly. Time to pick up some yellow with a clean brush, a little bit of titanium white and dab in the center this is where our sun is going to be. Still not quite dry enough yet, but we've got a nice base coat there. And I'm going to have a little window or archway doorway down there. Taking a small flat brush now. Some turquoise. Right on the edge of the brush. I'm going to start adding a river in this painting. 
So it's sort of, and pulling down some waterfalls. So you curve over, pull and flick. Everything you do on a regular size canvas, you'll do smaller and less on a tiny one, obviously. You're not gonna uh, be pushing very hard. You're not gonna be using as much paint. Um, so this landscape is inspired by a painting I did many years ago. Uh, it was called On the Right Path and a sad story actually. I had uh, one of my first um, art shows at a beautiful cafe in Golden BC and um, I came a few weeks later to take my paintings down after the show was over and one was missing. Well a few were missing. Uh, a few of them were sold and the other one was stolen. So it was really, really upsetting. I wonder if this has happened to any of you before. And it was one of my favorite paintings, too. I don't know how someone was able to go in there and, without anybody noticing, and stealing a large, I think it was like 18 by 24, so quite a big painting. Anyways, if this has happened to any of you guys before, you know how upsetting it can be. Um, so this is inspired by, it's kind of a mini version, slightly different. The other one had more of a path coming into um, the center and I should actually have a picture with this video today to show you guys what it looked like. Um, but I'm changing the path into a staircase for this painting today. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to build up this painting adding some trees on the side with lots of green moss or ivy back to this filbert brush loading it up with some yellow and i'm going to tap over partially on that green start highlighting it and i'm following that round circle shape this is drawing our eyes in the focal point is right there in the center So we've got a few pretty little waterfalls happening and I'm just going to build up some foliage around the sides here. Okay, so I want to start picking up some of this pretty peach color. I'm going to take a little bit of white with it. And we're going to begin painting around the sun. The thing about working with pastels is that every color looks pretty together. You really can't go wrong. So we've got this nice soft background and then we're going to have these uh, strong hunter green with a little bit of black uh, trees and shadows in the foreground for a really nice contrast. So we've got a nice balance of light and shadow going on in this painting. And let's take a little dab of white right in the center there. And a little bit down there in that, in that archway. I'm just going to add a few little highlights and sweeps down to these little waterfalls. Tap in a few clouds. And I'm just using a little bit of lavender that's mixing in with the white on my brush. Now, time for some yellow. Make sure you're cleaning your brush in between. Just to soften that white there, add a little bit of that bright yellow around the outside of it. Okay, so now what I want to do is really, really highlight closest to the waterfall here. So taking some light yellow, this is one of the pastel shades, tapping very lightly with the very tip of that filbert brush. And 
next color is pink. Okay, let's go ahead and start dabbing in just little dabs of color wherever we want it. Some flowers maybe. And right around that sun, we're going slightly over top of that light sky blue and the purple and the peach. So again, we're layering and building up the sunset one color at a time. Okay, and now I'm taking the bright yellow and I'm adding a little bit of that, mixing it into that pink. I'm just going to use this liner brush and outline, redefine that sun a little bit more. Pulling a little bit of that light blue down those waterfalls. I'm going to put a few little stars here, so I just want to lighten up this area with the light sky blue as well. Just using this liner brush, a little bit of white paint. You can do a few little dots and then pull lots of little tiny lines to create stars. I've got lots of videos on how to paint stars too, so have a look through my playlist if you'd like a more in-depth uh, tutorial on those. Okay, I'm going to start picking up the black now and put in some contrast. Adding this staircase, little lines, Pulling across and over where I want that staircase to look like it's curving and changing direction. So we're going to leave some spaces in between. And then they're going to get tinier and tinier and tinier till you just can't see where that staircase ends or where it's going to. It just disappears off into the distance. So I begin to add a few little uh, posts for uh, a railing here, um, and then I'm going to add foliage to it. I want to just outline this archway a little bit too. Okay, back to the filbert and some hunter green. Bright yellow. Using only the tip of your brush, tap lightly. Tiny your back there. And then as the staircase comes down towards the foreground, you're going to make them a little bit wider. So it's like just a skinny line way up there. And then I'm just going to dab a little bit of that color in between. Just want to soften that a little bit more. Remember things in the distance are going to be paler in color and tone. I'm just going to pull and flick down. Maybe there's moss and hanging 
vines and stuff coming down from that staircase. It's fun, really fun to just play around and make up your own little worlds as you go along while you're painting. Okay, so I've got my roof line in and the basic shape for my house using hunter green. And now I've got lavender and a little bit of black. Now we're going to keep the roof lighter and the rest of the house will be darker because the sun would be hitting that roof right there and we're going to add some light for windows after that are really going to stand out against the dark house. I'm taking pink and I'm dabbing in some flowers that are leading up the staircase. Maybe they're roses or hydrangeas. I don't know. It can be whatever you want them to be. So taking white, I just tap two little white, three little white dots for windows. And I just pulled up a little bit of lavender right there for some shadow and a little bit of definition on the waterfall. The more I add to this painting, uh, the less waterfalls uh, you can see. So it's really transforming. Sorry if you guys are upset that I painted over those waterfalls. Um, sometimes I don't really feel like I have control when I'm painting. It's like, it's kind of just taking on a life of its own and more like I'm being led. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but do you ever just start out with an idea for painting something and by the time you're finished it's completely different and you're like what happened <laughs> where did that come from um it's just really really relaxing to paint and and have no no rules you can just do whatever you want and i just go with it now and i just let the painting become what it does it's just an interesting process to see where it goes and how it transforms now I want to pull in a few little tiny branches, so you're going to use the smallest liner brush that you have. This is the smallest I have at this point. Um, all my other brushes are in my studio back on the island. Uh, we just um, moved to the city to be closer to my daughter and her baby. So just really defining these trees on either side now. Taking some light blue and highlighting inside of that. Or on the right side, I should say. And then hunter green on the outside. And then I'll add a little bit of black to that later on. So as I'm painting this, these trees, I start to um, see that maybe it could be a heart. And so I go with that and I just exaggerate these branches a little bit more and create a heart shape with these two trees coming together in the middle and hanging down. I could name this painting Home is Where the Heart Is, uh, but I've used that title before <laughs> for a painting, so I can't. Now see, when you add the black, 
how much everything else stands out and I know that I say I don't like to use black but I do have some exceptions so once in a while I will use black um, it will dry a little bit lighter than this for some reason black paint black acrylic paint dries lighter and your light colors will dry darker I have no idea why this is but it just is so keep that in mind you guys and there's just a little puff of smoke coming out from the chimney using a little bit of lavender and black Okay, I want to start adding another highlight to these stairs. I'm not going to take white, I'm going to take lavender. You could also use the ultramarine light blue as well. The tiny painting, it is so difficult to make those little lines, but you have to remember that it's not a photograph you're working on, so it's okay if things are a little bit crooked or lopsided. And maybe that staircase is an old stone staircase and it's been there for so long it's not going to be perfect and it's overgrown with bushes and I'm just highlighting with some light sky blue now. And I want to add a little bit of that light blue, ultramarine blue right here in this archway and a bit more on the stairs. Back to our peach or coral. Let's go inside that heart a little bit more. Outline the roof and then paint inside of it. Let's use some pale yellow now. Right around that sun, wherever you want, you ha want to have some bright, bright highlights. You want to add a little bit of that. I want to add a few stars here on the left side, so I'm just dabbing a little bit of that turquoise on. There's hardly any paint on my brush. Then I'm going to just tap the inside with pale yellow, very carefully pull and flick short little lines for the stars. And then a little bit more turquoise right around the outside of them. Need a little shadow in here on the edge to separate the tree and foliage from the waterfall. They were sort of both really bright and getting uh, lost. Bright yellow. So 
add a little bit more of that yellow over top of the hunter green. Now layering these two colors will change the tone of the green and I have a limited uh, palette I'm working with right now so I have to try and make colors that I don't have on me that I've left back at my uh, larger studio on the island. So it's a bit tricky, <laughs> definitely being challenged. Now time for some more black. Sort of lost the definition here on the house a little bit when I highlighted it. So I just want to put in some, try to put in some cleaner lines. And add our shadows. So I'm carefully going to go around the outside of those trees where they're in shadow. And on the inside of that staircase, it would have a shadow right there as well. A little bit more of the coral or the peach. Got a little bit of a uh, light tan I'm using, light gray tan, just to add little dabs of uh, earth tone in here. just trying to add a few little sun rays maybe shooting through this archway down here but it doesn't uh, turn out the way I wanted it to so I swipe it off gently after back to our hunter green To make it look like the house is not sitting on the water, we're going to add some bushes and grass and land down here. And the suggestion of just a little tree back there. You can barely see it, but it's there. And then little dabs of yellow on top where the light from the window will be hitting them. And I want to make more of a foreground down here. It'll just help to set everything else in the distance up there. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of big flowers down here using the peach, pink, and yellow. I'm going to have to take off a little bit of that paint down there though because I added a bit too much accidentally. So I just took a little bit of that light blue for a highlight on that branch and then I took yellow and went over top of it to make a pretty green. Okay, so right here I'm trying to add some pink but it won't, won't work because I have way too much paint on there so I'm just going to scoop off a little bit of this paint and then I can 
add more of that pink. While I'm doing that, I'm going to add a little bit around the shape of the heart. Just brush a little bit of that over on the right side. Maybe a little bit more black. We're just about done this painting. This tiny painting actually took a lot longer than I thought it would. I'm just using some bright yellow here. Sort of pulling and twisting. just pull a little bit more light down here on the bottom. And I'll just add the finishing touches to this little painting. And then I'll call it done. So some coral back there. I really had fun painting this one. It was a challenge, but I do like a challenge. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. I'll have links below for my Patreon page, as well as Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. I look forward to showing you my next one in my mini-series. Happy painting, everybody, and I'll see you next time.